Hi everyone, I wanted to record a video to show you how to use that Microsoft Excel template for confidence intervals. So first let's locate where that file is on Blackboard. So let me just make sure student mode is on so that you don't see all my hidden folders, which would just add to confusion. All right, here we go. So I'll go down to week 12. And in week 12, if you scroll down and find confidence intervals, XLS. And if you click on that file and open it up, that's what we're going to use to create confidence intervals. So let's take a look. So I split my screen differently today. I did the bottom half and the top half because it's a wide um, a wide view of the confidence intervals template. But let's do the question on the last page of the handout for lesson 21 um, about the pig dice. So here we go again. We have a pig that landed on its right side 4,172 times. So I'm going to highlight that and out of 11,954 times. Construct a 90% confidence interval. So this is my confidence. Uh, for the population proportion of rolls of a pig die in which the pig die lands on its right side. So the first question is, before we even continue, are the criteria for normality met? So remember, that's that magic number of 10. So success is here equals the 4,172 times is the 4,172 times the pig landed on its right side. So the successes are 4,172 right side. And the failures would be not landing on the right side. To find that number, we would just subtract. So 11,954 minus the 4,172. And that's going to equal, let's type this into Google. So let me just open this up. And yeah, let's see what we get. And according to Google, it's 7,782. 7, All right. So not the right side. Therefore, normality criteria... has been met. All right, next. We can continue on then and use the template above since normality has been met. So what is the sample proportion? Well, let's have our template tell us that work. So let's put in the net, let's put in the numbers. So we have 4172 out of 11,954 and there's my p hat, which is my proportion. And the confidence I want from the previous part of the question was 90%. And I just put that in that third gray box. Uh-oh. All right, here we go. So let's see here. So this is the number I want for p hat. So p hat, whoops, p hat equals 0 0.349, which is about 35%, so 34.9% of the time, it lands on the right side. All right. Next, what is the critical value that is associated with the 90% level? So from my template above, for right here, it says critical z-score. I know I have a spelling error, but it's supposed to say critical. And so z sub c is equal to 1.645. Remember, that's the number of z scores necessary to go away from the center to make sure I capture 90% of the data. All right, what is the margin of error? So if you recall, that's that ugly formula with the square roots times the z critical um, of p hat times 1 minus p hat all over n. So that's a pretty complicated formula, but Excel here will do this for us pretty easily. So the margin of error E equals 0 0.007, which is 0 
0.7%. All right, so finally, let's get the confidence interval down here. The confidence, oh, interpret the margin of error. So this is the amount you need to add and subtract from the sample proportion in order to capture the middle 90%. So I have to add and subtract that to my 34.9%. Uh, so this number right here. And that's what's done over here with the lower limit and the upper limit. All right, so let's construct the confidence interval. So I'll use parentheses and I'll do 0 0.342 is my lower limit, comma, 0 0.342. 356 is my upper limit. So let's interpret that. So if I'm, oh, let me make that red. Okay, let me make that red. There it is. So if I interpret that number, it means in a sample of 11,954 pig tosses. We are 90% confident the true proportion of the pig landing on its right side is between, or falls between, 34.2% and 35.6%. Red. So the true proportion is somewhere in that number. So would you support the claim of 33% of all rolls have the pig die landing on its right side? Why or why not? We would disagree that 33% is a probable number or probable proportion of right side landing pigs. However, it is possible <laughs> that our sample could be wrong. All right, so let's just take a look at how I might be able to capture the 33 if I want to be more. So one way to, to increase the width of the confidence interval is that I could change the confidence level to let's say 99%. If I do 99% that still is not quite enough because I end up with 33.8 as my lower limit. <laughs> now let's try 99.5% and that just rounded up to 100. That's 337 so I may never really capture the 33 as a possible number. Maybe 99.9%. Let's try that. Uh, still, 99.9% .9 confidence interval, which is kind of ridiculous, um, would only be 33.5%. So I'm pretty confident in disagreeing that 33% is the probable proportion. I do not agree. So name two ways to reduce the margin of error which means you would be making the prediction more precise. So let's see, if I increase precision, I can do this by, number one, I could increase the sample size, or number two, I could decrease the confidence level. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to type in 80% up here, if I did an 80% interval. And if just to remind you of the numbers that we had, um, this is 34 point, or 0.343 to 355, and the original interval I had was 342 <laughs> to 356. So this is slightly, um, slightly narrower. I mean, I'm... Uh, yeah, slightly narrower because my lower limit's a little bit greater and my upper limit is a bit less. All right. And 
It also asks which was is probably the better way to actually increase precision. Precision, which way would you think is preferable? And the answer is to increase the sample size. So preference should be given to sample size since artificially lowering since artificially lowering wow what is going on with my email artificially lowering the confidence level is not desirable. All right. So let's highlight that. Whoops. All right. I have no idea why. Oh, I know why all these are popping up because I'm a student in Blackboard, so it's telling me I'm late with all my tests. Great. <laughs> okay, well that's the end of the video. That shows you how you can easily do a confidence interval on the Excel template. So I hope that helps. Good luck.